Well, how did it all start? The first mission was really fluky, man. That was the Gaia video. An excellent excuse, I think, for me to go out and really find the beautiful places and get up early and see the sunrises and that sort of thing. But then it became more about um, exploring ideas with people about like what really inspired them. And, and for me, it was really about authenticity and generating content which was um, not scripted and just straight off the cuff, you know, like people in the natural environments just sort of saying things as it occurred to them to say them. And uh, from that I'd extract tiny little bits and pieces and quote them totally out of context. They're very nice to you. I don't know, can you be deliberate about being natural? Uh, that is a very good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, that's a bad answer. Just straight off the cuff, you know, like... I'm deliberately natural! I don't know, I don't know. I really don't know what I'm talking about, actually. <laughs> deliberately natural. Okay, what was it about? It was about, um... It was about authenticity, and it was about inspiration, and it's about freedom. That's the other thing that it's about. And I think, like, you know, a lot of the... A lot of the artists that I met and so on, I think, you know, a lot of people that really value freedom also really value the arts. And so we, uh... We did a chapter on art in there and that was really cool. Okay. But the question is why art why art is important. I mean I look inside of me, art is about creativity, it's about a creative spark, and that's in, in all of us and in the work that we do. Moving out of conformity and moving into a, 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 more, a, a connection, a sense of being, being, you know, we're on the planet together, there is billions of us, what do we share? I love it when I go to theatre, that absolutely moves me that takes me out of myself and I see uh, the human soul they do. It becomes more about taking people out of their everyday life and allowing them to uh, just experience potentially um, a lightheartedness and a, an eloquent stupidity for a while. I think everything, life is art, you know, um, art, hopefully art can be uh, an expression of love because you need to take so much care and you need to search so much within yourself what you really want to do because again it's something you're not, you're not bound by anything, you start with something, it can be anything and you don't have to have any laws or any uh, rules or anything, you can start with something and then you do it your way and it becomes unique. Anything. You put it that way and you look at it and say, wow, I, I did that, you know? And of course, when you get more uh, uh, in, in the consciousness of creating a, an object of beauty or of attraction, uh, I think it's again something where while you are doing it, you don't really think, you just feel. It's a feeling. Art is maybe a, a feeling that is materialized. I think it 
helps people to explore themselves and touch, touch areas of life or experience that will encourage them to do other things and help them with things they normally do in life as well, just by touching on new topics. Mainly spiritually really, mainly sort of as a spiritual kind of um, representing some sort of spiritual form or idea, so it comes out a lot in my life and my art. It's a statement, I think our society, it's a statement about who we are, and it's also a statement about where we've come from. There's a language in the soul, and I own the language, and it's just a beautiful thing. You know, like some Zen people go up and touch a tree and they communicate with it. <laughs> and I can do that with stone. Every single person who looked at that feels the love in it, they feel the energy in it, but they have a totally different perspective. And to me, that's what art is. Art is kind of like love, it's in the eye of the beholder. If you don't think it's art, then to you it isn't. If you think it is, it's everything. The whole world's art. Clouds are art. The creation of this planet is an art. The balance of the ecosystem is an art. How could it be anything else? And what we are doing, I believe, is channeling that. your passion you don't burn out it just is there the energy the life force is there the heart is in tune and that's what I want most for us to be able to offer for these young people so my job is not as an artist here but just to work have the pleasure of working with you folks so I think you're the last of the edge dwellers the last outlaws the people who are daring to and determined to no matter what live by the edge of their creativity. And that's not for me. And that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much just went with the flow, constantly ran out of money, constantly ran out of petrol or gas or whatever and had to, until some money showed up from somewhere until I could uh, go to the next place. So that just made a really nice fun lifestyle and met some amazing people and had some really good in-depth conversations. I guess it's living an inspired vision 
because A, we like it, and B, hopefully it rubs off on other people and inspires them to do their vision. Definitely. And if you don't have those living examples, you know what's wrong with the old system, but you may not know how how you could create something that works, that, that, that actually succeeds it. But once you see it, it's like, oh, that's simple. I can do that. But I do it this way, and this way, and this way. And it's like encouraging that intelligence, creative intelligence, eh? In, in encouraging creative intelligence in human beings so they um, ascend to being goddess gods again. You know, as custodians of planet paradox. That's, that's the plot, that's the big picture. The richness of experience, which is accessible to everyone, through coming into stillness, through coming into an appreciation of the sensations of our own bodies, of our own environments, of the sounds of the water running, you know, it doesn't need to be 20 kPa pumping out the latest beats, you know, that's, that's a reflection. The source is there and all things there, and a leaf and a stone and a river and a breath of wind. And that's what Deeper is about for me. It's about learning to appreciate the subtle things rather than the gross oversaturation of consumer culture. But it takes us to places that, you know, we haven't been much before. You know, but as explorers, some of us have been to those higher dimensions and that's the idea of exploring is you have more familiar familiarity with higher dimensions. So when it's crunch time and you have to step up to them, it's like, oh cool, been here before, yeah. totally comfortable with the next step and able to help and guide people along the way too. That's the pioneer spirit, hey, that's the ones that are willing to take the chances and explore new territory and then be there to help guide others who are probably a little less adventurous. Nice, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, I'm in that adventure group. <laughs> and there's some bees that like to go out and explore, find new things. And so if one of these bees goes out and finds this you know, big bush full of flowers and full of nectar, and gets really excited and comes back, comes back into the hive and it does this dance, right? And depending on how long the dance is and how passionate the bee is about the dance determines how many bees will follow it to the source of food, mm. right? So if, you know, that's a perfect analogy for what an artist or, uh, or somebody who's out on the edge looking, that's one of those people, right? One of those people out there on the edge looking around, you find something amazing, you come back and you do this amazing dance, right? And then people will follow you, right? But if you come back and, you know, you just kind of go, oh, that was cool. Nobody's going to follow you, right? There. Incredible diversity and brilliance and talent in doing the simple things and so many different, I mean, look at the types of music that come out of the different tribes, the types of way of, of solving, you know, day-to-day -day life challenges. And if you take the best of everything from every tribe and put it together, you have paradise and if you take the worst of it you have hell yeah. and you know people focus on well your bible says different from my bible and it's like yeah but they also completely agree so why don't we focus on the agreement parts and really get along rather than slam each other because of some misinterpreted phrase mm. it's like oh. details you know yeah pretty details yeah. big picture please and it's just that that extreme of dark and light playing itself out to the nth degree and we'll we'll see the nth degree in, in, not in our lifetimes in the next few years is my my kind of understanding because it's accelerating exponentially into madness and suicide and into rapture and bliss simultaneously so how does that go third dimensional reality is based on polarities like and dark male and female all the rest of them and we're in third dimensional reality to gather as much experience as we possibly can. So we have the information to make the decision consciously to move into love, which is the ticket to higher dimensional realities. And if you don't move into love, then the dark side, as it suicides itself even further, it suicides itself. It finds a lower reality to live in. And as the light sides involve themselves and enlighten themselves, they move into love, which is the portal into higher dimensional realities, and they move upwards. And so Earth is that kind of a third dimensional reality plane existence on Earth is that 
is that growing ground where you can grow mad or grow enlightened and it's that's free will eh what are you going to do and according to your actions so you create your reality it's beautiful really if you look at it in the in the objective big big distance viewpoint it's beautiful you have complete freedom to create heaven or hell what's your preference and that's interesting, eh? I mean, I don't understand why people would choose hell. Yeah, we... It's funny, eh? It's an old choice, because it's right here. You you know, you are in paradise, and you all have experiences of love and enlightenment. And do you value them and cherish them and, and really nurture them, or do you go back into fear? I started playing music when I was about two. I started playing on the piano when I was reaching out like this to play the keys. And um, I got to a point with the piano where I couldn't really play with um, other people spontaneously, you know. It was it became more of a sort of virtuoso instrument, which was fine, but it just wasn't so much fun. And then I got into drumming, went to my first big drum circle. And yeah, everything that I loved about music was there, all of the spontaneity and the accessibility and the inclusiveness and the um, real connection with a whole bunch of people. It didn't matter if you'd played together before or not, it was you know, universal language. I'm just my movement and the sound. That's, uh, that's what I become when I'm playing. People let go and dance and become absorbed by music and, and by the drum and, and, and by the beat that leads music. Uh, then they let go to the point where they can become more of that one, or, or yeah, where they join more with that. Join, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. They join more with that oneness. And that's, a, that's part of the gift of, of rhythm and music, is that once you're captivated by it, uh, in a group of people, it, it, they, they start to move together. Finishing, creating everything in the world. He already created the swimming ones and the four legged the flying creatures and so forth. All of a sudden he heard and it kept getting louder and louder. Woom woom. Woom woom. Until it was right next to create. Who are you? And the 
period of the drums? Well, boy, you don't remember? You created me practically at the beginning. I'm the spirit of the drum. And great mystery, look at us. Well, that's nice. Why are you here now? And the spirit of the drum replied, I want to be a part of this thing. I see all these wondrous things that you're creating. This beautiful Mother Earth, the two-legged people, the four-legged, all the creatures, the standing people, the stone people, everything is so beautiful. And I want to be a part of this.
thing that uh, drummers drumming is uh, is really pretty much like a display of that person's intention for life and creation to keep happening. This is the uh, this is the post the post fishing sightseeing mission. What do we think about that? Yeah, well, that's what I expected. So where are we? <laughs> we're about four nuts off and one more to go. No, hang on, we're in the middle of nowhere. We're on a sort of a four wheel drive track back road in the highlands of South Island. We're having a good time, eh? Of course. Sweet ass. Wait a second. Hang on. Oh, Got to get the close up of that, bro. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, 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 she just. Yeah, she, well, slight yeah. problem. Beautiful. Oof. Deadly. Have a look. <laughs> <laughs> it's deadly. 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 Fucking A, man. That's wicked. Fucking deadly.
hard to put anything much into words at the moment except the overwhelming intensity of what's just been happening. And the the humbling experience of it, actually not knowing anything when it comes right down to it and having to be in that and and wing it on love basically to go into a completely unknown area with only your love to guide you through. And just experiencing how how powerful that's, that's been, especially with friends and family, just being in that space of, of knowing the loss and feeling the tragedy and not understanding why or any of the details about any of that and seeing how in the midst of that loss and, and grieving and just being in completely uncharted territory, how the core of love that unites the family, the people, the tribe, the friends of Malia has brought out so much of the best in everyone through these times brought out you know, the human best in ourselves in times of intense difficulty and intense sadness and intense love and joy and celebration too. All of that all trundled together into changing times, just times of grief and times of ecstasy and times of pleasure and times of support and comfort and love. Yeah, it's, it's completely humbling in the sense that where are your priorities, what's actually important and this comes through what's what actually is important in your life when you do the blood and live through for what seemed like the most unnecessary reasons for no reason at all. The world bridger is the ultimate surrender, the ultimate death. And I know in the Mayan world um, a whole lifetime was spent in training for the moment of releasing the body and it was seen as the peak experience and the whole potency of it was to be so fully in the moment that the moment the body was taken um, there could be an incredible alignment with your spirit and staying with that even while in the body. The world bridger is surrender. Surrender, surrender, surrender. Absolute bliss if you choose it. And it's a choice. So, try that one. What's come through for me more than anything else is just to. allow the sadness and allow the grieving when it is here which is a big growing for me but also to hold really clearly focus the the joy of this being this beloved person this goddess that's blessed our lives and, and really make sure that all of those just joyous pleasures and wonders that we've loved in her all this time are not wasted and they power on through us to step up to her level to carry on her legacy in our lives. And 
that makes it that makes it a beautiful challenge. It makes it a really beautiful challenge, a huge challenge. Because she was the stepper up, or she was the she was my role model and my mentor and my inspiration, as well as many, many, and many other people. So um, that richness, that beauty, that power, that love, that incandescent spontaneity and just joy of living. It's like, okay, factor that in. That's what you like, factor that in, live it. And uh, that's the flip side, that's the, that's the blessing side. Um, here's your challenge. Can you, love, can you live the things you love when another person who's shown you them is no longer here to do it in the physical? And that's a beautiful challenge, and that somehow makes meaning out of what otherwise seems completely random and meaningless and unnecessary. But how do you invest meaning and, and value and love into those situations? It really makes me go to the core of my being and check in as to what's important and how I can. Uh, How I can make that passing seem less of a waste and less of a tragedy by bringing all of those things of Mali that I love into the forefront of my life and making sure that stays alive and thrives. And I spend a lot more time being deliberate about, you know, just being natural. I don't know, can you be deliberate about being natural? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deliberately natural. I don't know, I don't know. I really don't know what I'm talking about, actually. Deliberately natural. Yeah, but actually one thing I do want to say, though, is just talk to that film really quickly. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, because, um, you know, when I look around and I see all the... I read. Well, for a start, I haven't watched TV, read a newspaper, listened to the radio for 10 years. And that's not an exaggeration. Occasionally I get in people's cars and they've got the radio on. Occasionally I sit in an airport and I'll see a television and there'll be some news on it. But I haven't had those things in my home for 10 years. And whenever I do tap into a documentary which is about what's going on in the world with the Iraq war with the American government or whatever and I feel this sense of sort of anger come up you know or this sense of outrage and righteousness and I want to do something about it you know four or five years ago that's what I used to feel I used to feel angry and then a few years ago I felt sad and now I'm sort of sitting here going well you know I'm kind of almost attached to it you know and what strikes me about this whole thing is that there's all this bad news out there and we keep hearing more and more and more about people talk about it and isn't it terrible and what are we going to do in the global warming crisis but i think how do you actually create something how do you demonstrate to people tangible practical ways of a new way of being of a, of a new system of a new way of living of a new way of being in the community and i personally think that what would be awesome is to start giving people examples of, of what it's like to operate from a being to being level to be connected to spirit and to operate from that space and so you know like for people like you who are, are out there taking messages out into the community i think it's amazing that you can actually hang with people who are 
connected, who can talk about love, who can talk about being vulnerable, who can live that way and actually capture that and say to these people who are stuck in these ways of being, you know, in a, in a conventional society and say to them, hey look, here's a little pocket of life over here that you might not have ever seen before. Here's people at one o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday night sitting around a fire wrapped in blankets looking at the stars and communing with each other, you know, and they haven't sort of just finished eating a pizza and watching Shortland Street and trundled off to bed and, you know, getting up for the daily grind the next day and inspiring people with examples of how we can actually live a different life, you know, and I think that's really important. It's like taking spirit into the community and using the media channels to deliver it to people. Um, and it's a little bit like, you know, with The Secret where they talk about um, you know, if you're, if you're anti-war, don't focus on being anti-war, focus on being pro-peace. You know, or if you don't want to vote for that guy in the government, don't put your attention on him, put your attention on the person you do want to vote for. So I'm feeling like a tangible way that we can actually sort of support that process is by focusing on being more of, you know, spirit and then capturing that and sharing it with others. Yeah. I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to get there. Yeah. So, I guess I would start off coming out of the muck, like we all have, and, and then uh, maybe I'll go from vehicle to vehicle, try the different, different possibilities. How the hell are we going to get from the Indies to the Andes with only Andes? And maybe a few uh, backup. <laughs> This is our fearless captain sailing to the islands. I forgot uh, which one I need in the islands. If I need to make a harmonious music with the friends, and, uh, or I need to do a chop as everybody's head off. I forget. <laughs> Maybe I do both. <laughs> uh, Why is music important? Crazy question. Uh, music's important because uh, basically it unifies people. And it's, for me, it's something which can replace what religion has lost. It's that spirits communing. So it's very important that we keep that alive, basically. It comes from inside. It, it, it comes from, you know, I think God blessed us with this music. So, you know, if you don't use it, then you just lose it so it's a good release when you're feeling a bit stressed out about something you know just plays plays play on the drums or on the cowbells or a drum kit and it just um, yeah it can free you up that's that's the most important thing is having fun drummers have more fun I know for sure I mean it's pretty hard to not have fun when you drum so you just got to get off your bum and drum So yeah, so right, so the plan is sail around all of the islands, all of them. And just show up and bang on my drum and see what happens, you know. And the concept is rhythm is the universal language. people for ourselves you know like drum is kind of meditation and a lot of people like enjoying also like, drumming because they can 
they can dance and bring happiness. I used to take psychedelic drugs at different times in my life and I got to realise that drumming and dancing puts me in exactly the same state. It's kind of like a, if you like a trance, but it's a very clear trance because you can walk away from it when you've had enough. You can walk out of that circle, go have a drink of water, chat to people and then go back in, a couple of breaths, start dancing again and you're back up into that certain state. That's my journey with it and it keeps me alive, it keeps me connected. It's this beautiful place in a circle where uh, of all race, religions, genders can mix together and have a, a sense of freedom for a moment. I've seen people with straight collared shirts come in there, men come in and start doing a dance that they would never ever comprehend. I've seen women, old women, young women, 12, 13 year old girls walk in who are, who are very tense and then they shut their eyes and they start to dance and they get into that same state. So that's the beauty of drumming for me. You know, of, really simple earthy cultural music, South Pacific, India, Asia, the places that I've been to, where people just have this joy of dance. and in particular rhythm and drumming is uh, it's something which is natural to people but it's also something that, which is cultural and something which we've learned from long back in our history and everybody's kind of participated in it and we, we are now taking that just a little bit step further. important because of the future of the young people and also the people from the young people must be uh, what's that uh, touch their uh, uh, life life to create them because music can bring us together or music can make us uh, uh, happy or music can help us uh, uh, stay in one community so every every time when we celebrate or any any time in the world we must use Music helps people to understand more, more, more than just talking. So that is how music. You can say that the, the, the music is also important.
rhythms and Afro-Brazilian rhythms. They have the same origin from uh, African slaves. And so that, that harks back that um, they can cross cultures as well. And, and now you notice um, the same kind of rhythms in dance music. And, I could go and get lessons from a teacher that couldn't speak any English and I could hardly speak any Portuguese and I was able to learn just by listening and watching and um, I don't know, there wasn't any need to communicate um, verbally, we could just communicate through music and that's, that was pretty amazing. Very nice thing. Music helps people to understand more. She goes dancing, prancing, flying around through the forest. She goes dancing, prancing, flying around through the forest. Says hello to the caterpillar man Flies down low where the butterflies can Every toad, every little creature
reaching on I see a fly round my head Never come again She only comes out If you don't know You gotta be quiet as you can In the forest Yo You got to know How to know You got to know How to flow Mary, the little fairy, calls Mary, our little fairy, now she goes dancing, prancing round in the clouds. Through the forest, across the seas, over those mountains, fly.